Hey, hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon. How you doing? Nice to meet you. I hope you're doing so very well. Today I am bringing you some reviews on some disturbing books that I have read. So this idea came to me because I've been branching into reading more horror of late and it's a genre that I want to get into. So I inevitably found myself on like you booktubers or youtubers that read horror so i took some recommendations i took a lot of these books from like disturbing book lists or horror recommendations and i found Haley hughes and read with meg in the process and i am now subscribed to their channel and i am taking more recommendations from them because i had some winners that they recommended so let's get in and start this video review. There's going to be no spoilers on these books. It is just going to be a brief rundown of what the book is about and how I personally felt while reading it. So you will not get spoiled here. I do want to put a blanket statement that if you pick up any of these books, please look up trigger warnings. I don't feel like I'm the type of person that gets triggered easily, but these books have trigger warnings for a reason and after reading them i did not myself look up trigger warnings and after reading them i highly recommend that you do because there is some dark dark shit in here the first book i have here is pen pal by daniel auerbach i believe is how you say his last name this story is a story of fragmented memories told from an adult perspective looking back on his childhood and in this we follow this story as it seems to not really have any plot. You follow this fragment in memories that through a child's lens means absolutely nothing, but through an adult lens means a lot. And slowly we start to figure out why these memories are so important to the main character. I have heard so much about pen pals, so I thought there was no chance that I was going to do a disturbing book review video without this book being in here because I've had it recommended on YouTube so much and it would feel like a loss to not have this in this video. I enjoyed this more than I thought I would. The writing was smoother than I originally thought because obviously this is told in fragmented memories. So I was worried it would maybe like a little choppy or not as smooth and like jumping from memory to memory might take you out of the story but to be fair the author done a good job in making the memories smooth. I also really enjoyed the aspect of childhood friendship that shone through in this book. Like the main character had a best friend and he was in most of the memories and you didn't know why this was important but it does become more important later on in the story but just their friendship and the innocence of children doing their own thing playing their own games really shines through in this book which was a little bit surprising i will say that i did not find this book scary and maybe creepy but honestly, this book was more sad than anything else. I did skip like two whole pages because there's this whole scene with spiders and I just don't do bugs. I don't do any kind of insect ever. <laughs> it's not happening. So I did skip like two whole pages. It was like a scene because that shit would have triggered the fuck out of me. And I had to go to bed after reading this. And I was lying in the dark and this spider scene came up and I was like, I am not reading this because I will never ever get to sleep if I read this. Or if I do get to sleep, I'll dream of big giant fucking spiders trying to eat me. So I did not read that part. I did skip two pages of this story. But that was the only part that was really scary to me. And that's because I am personally afraid of spiders. So I would say that this story just felt more sad than anything else. It was fast paced. It was not an easy read. I wouldn't say that it was easy because it does deal with hard hitting topics and it does go into more psychological reasons as a mum trying to keep her child safe while also trying to come to terms with what is actually going on. This was actually a fairly decent read. I gave it a 3.5 star. I did really enjoy it. 
I just I felt like maybe an extra chapter on the end would have you know made the book come full circle I don't feel like we got enough of the main character as an adult with all the revelations at the end coming through I feel like if we spent more time with the character after the big reveals we would it would have felt more rounded it just felt like it finished and it finished on a very sad note so it was like I wanted just that little bit more you know I just wanted that little bit more and it didn't quite give me that but I understand why everyone recommends this because it is one of those that I think you can enjoy if you like normal horror or extreme horror it's one of those that falls like in between the two genres it definitely is a disturbing book not the most disturbing book I read for this video but it definitely has that you know psychologically disturbing factor of just creep and I did enjoy it I just wish that it gave that little bit more and I would have been a bit more satisfied I think um it just felt like it ended and just you know it wasn't quite enough for me moving on to the next book I have to say that I give all the trigger warnings for this book I believe this is the first extreme horror book that I have ever read <laughs> and I believe that you should look up trigger warnings even if you feel like you don't get triggered please just protect your mind protect yourself I beg of you this book is The Groomer by John Athan obviously you can tell by this title what this book is going to be about <laughs> I had this recommended to me on multiple youtubers and also like goodreads and something else i can't remember i seen it somewhere else when i was looking for disturbing books um to read for this video <laughs> i didn't i didn't read any trigger warnings so i went into this and was like i'll be fine and i almost puked like twice reading this book so i should probably say um did i even say what this book is um maybe i did maybe i didn't it's on the screen anyway so this book follows two sides of the situation so we have the predators online being disgusting vile human beings and then we have this family who stumble upon one of these disgusting vile human beings and they have an interaction with him that gets the police involved he gets away unscathed because he is smart and he has been doing this and knows what he's doing so the family move on with their life and start doing their normal everyday activities until one day their little girl grace i believe her name is grace is taken she's only five years old it's so heartbreaking this book so the dad is out for blood out for the truth out for vengeance he wants to know where his daughter is he wants answers and the police aren't going to stop him his wife ain't going to stop him like he is going for it and he decides to take matters into his own hands and try and find where his daughter is this book was soul destroying like i gave it a four stars and i hate myself for it the whole reason like the whole way through this book i felt so guilty for reading this and i don't know why that was because i'm reading a book you know and yes this does have inflections on what happens in real life and i will implore you that if you want some if you want to watch some people actively take action against these awful vile human beings you should watch underage undercover they work with sosa which is a non-profit charity to stop the predators doing what they do and they their work is absolutely amazing and they're doing such a good job at bringing these people down so if you want a real world like vengeance show that is showing people take action to protect children then i highly recommend that show this is not that this this is very much a vengeance story and i did discover one of my triggers i don't do bodily fluids around sex scenes like even if it's not meant to be like a romantic sex scene the sex scene in this book was not meant to be romantic it was not meant to be nice it was not meant to be anything other than what it was but there was mentions of pus and blood and i just mm, 
I was literally Culkin all the way through this scene. I did not know this was a trigger for me, but I do not do bodily fluids around the sex scene. No, thank you. I mm, you can have that back. Thank you, sir. No thanks. But, but it had its intended um reaction like the book is meant to be gory it's meant to be gruesome it's not meant to be something that's easy to read which is why i struggled with this one because i rated it so highly and i was so worried because the just the content of this book and i was like mm, what does this say about me as a person that i rated this highly but then i just thought you're overthinking this way too much shannon it's a fucking book let's just leave it at that so yeah, I discovered that. I also discovered um there's an there's a scene at the end of this book <laughs> that just had me feeling physically ill. Like I was the first one, the like sex scene, I was like disgusted. Like I was like Oof. But then the uh, the final scene, I didn't think they could amp it up from there, but John Nathan definitely decided, like, let's give them a big show at the end of this book. And I was like, I now feel sick. I am, um, like, I didn't eat during this whole book because I just couldn't bring myself to to eat. It was so gross. It was so gruesome. It was so extreme. It's definitely the most extreme book I've ever read definitely the most disturbing book I've ever read and because I'm new to horror because I'm new to disturbing books I would take this with a pinch of salt because there might be people out there that read more extreme horror have a uh, history with the genre and wouldn't even batter an eyelid at this but I battered many eyelids and I couldn't fault this book like it was it was a fast read I did have to put it down a couple of times because it was so intense um, and I do implore you to look up trigger warnings, but the book done exactly what it says it was going to do. It's extreme horror, it's gory, it went places that normal horrors or thrillers don't normally go. I had no fault with this and this is why I was like feeling a little bit, uh, what's the word? What's the word? Like I was swaying back and forth <laughs> on how I felt about this book because the writing was good, the characters were well developed, the gore was exactly what it says it was going to be, the book made me feel physically sick which is something that an extreme horror book tends to want to do, it wants to make you feel uncomfortable, it wants to make you cringe you know, so like this book delivered exactly what it says it was going to so I could not rate it any lower than what I did. The only reason it didn't get a full five stars is because I feel like the end where we started getting some answers to things I would have liked that to have been a bit more closure in that like there I'm pretty sure it's an epilogue or the last chapter has like an overall like this is the after events I just wish we maybe got like one more chapter in between that and the answers we were given just to see like how this um like how the repercussions landed i wish that it just had that little bit you know extra in there i also felt like there was a couple of like side stories that were weaved through that never came back around so like so we had little chapters of other people on the internet experiencing vile things and it was never revisited it was just like a little snapshot of what happened and then moved back into the original plot and i feel like it may have been nice to visit some of those things like later on in the plot line instead of it just being like little bits here and there like they could have been novellas they could have been spin-off novels um because we didn't get any closure or anything like any follow-up it just felt really out of place so that's why it didn't get a full five star. This is not a book that I would recommend widely. It's not a book I would recommend to most people, actually. This is only a book I would recommend if you are into extreme horror, if you read the triggers, and if you think you can handle it. That is like the main thing about this book, but it did deliver, and that's all I can say for it. The next book I read was Gone to See the Riverbound by Christopher Trina. 
and this follows a young girl not young i'd say an adult woman so can't really say young this follows a woman who becomes a pen pal to a serial killer called edmund cox and she becomes friends with him and she visits him and he asks her for a favor and she says yes and the favor is she needs to go to his cabin that the police did not seize find the key and bring it to the river man and this sounds simple enough but this request is coming from a serial killer so it's not going to be a nice quest isn't it um no one knows what the river man is who he is where he lives and you just float down a river to try and find him also the the story of this this was a good story i did enjoy this i gave it four stars i am looking forward to picking up the sequel to this and i did really enjoy this it was hard to read in places because we got some of the main characters Laurie, Laurie's past and she is not a good person so you're reading from an extremely unlikable person and you know that this isn't going to end well because it's from like it's a favor from a fucking serial killer like nothing's ever going to go right if you start the story with that that is your catalyst the story is not going to end well the book was well written it was fast paced i do wish the reason this didn't get a five full five star was because while we were in like the last third of the book i don't feel like we were in it long enough i wanted to be in the main plot point longer so that we could really experience the thrill and the adrenaline and the creepiness of the river man but it was just a little bit short on that end um there is hard language in this again as i said look up triggers for all of these books there's hard language in this um laurie our main character has a sister abby who is disabled and she comes along to go see the river man with her and laurie's inner thoughts are vile and what she's done in her past is vile like you hate this woman like i came to the point where i was like i do not like you in the slightest like you are just awful no wonder you're connecting with a serial killer because you have that kind of evil within you you know and i was just like mm -mm. I don't like this character but it did not stop me from really enjoying this book because even though the character was unlikable even though the third act just didn't last that little bit longer like i wanted to the story gave it gave exactly what you wanted it to it gave you the creepy feeling it gave you the serial killer like creeps it also gave you an unlikable main character that did not take away from the story even though you hated this woman throughout this whole book like it didn't want it didn't make me want to stop reading it just made me hate her even more as i read and once i got to the third act i was like this bitch needs to die um because i was just like how how is this okay how is this okay but i will say that everything that happened in this was well thought out the book was well plotted it was well written the creepiness um was well done the atmosphere was so well done as they're traveling through this wooded area um the atmosphere really took on a life of its own and i think that's what really makes this book great because the characters are unlikable and well developed and then the surrounding and the place that it's plotted is so well developed as well as i said because of this because the atmosphere was so great not having a lot of time in the third act where the atmosphere is meant to be like at the all-time peak really kind of annoyed me because i was like you've built up this atmosphere so well i just needed like two extra chapters in that peak atmospheric creepy time so yeah i really enjoyed this give four star i will be reading the sequel also um, if you have any disturbing, extreme horror, horror, any recommendations that you would like to see me talk about or read, comment down below because I can make another one of these. I actually had fun making this video. 
I don't know if fun is the right word considering how disturbing these books are but I read these books really quickly and I it's outside my comfort zone it's outside my normal reading so it just felt fresh so if you want me to read any more of these kinds of books leave your recommendations down below and I can easily read them and come back to you with the same kind of video I'm doing just now just a sit down talk through spoiler free review um but yeah I I had fun making this video reading these books which is probably very weird to say um the last book I am going to talk about is DNF don't hate me Maeve Maeve Fly by CJ Lead I got this on NetGalley because I was so hyped for it and now I regret all my decisions this was billed to me like a female American psycho and I got 32% of the way in and I hated this like maybe it just went over my head and I didn't like quite grasp the book um which you know is fine I'm not I'm I don't read to be intelligent I read because I enjoy escaping reality you know so if a book is going over my head maybe I'm just not smart enough for it and that is fine by me but the pretentiousness of this main character fucking sucked this so this main character in the first 30 percent in the first 30 percent this main character had done nothing but annoy me annoy me so much she works at a theme park as a princess during the day and then at night she haunts the strip all mysterious with her book and she has a best friend and her best friend introduces her to her brother and I will say the only thing that I found interesting about this book was the main character and the brother interacting like if the book wasn't so if the book wasn't written the way it was I maybe would have continued for their interactions alone but 30 percent 32 percent into this book there had been pretty much no horror to speak of the main character was doing my bloody head in because I just didn't I didn't get it it was like she was she was trying too hard like she could have easily been femme fatale like I wasn't a victim but I'm evil I'm I'm you know I'm bad femme fatale energy but she gave off I'm saying that I'm not a victim but I still act like a victim even though I want you to think that I'm dark edgy and femme fatale all you really think is I'm pretentious needy and looking to be that wallflower you know that it girl like she was giving me she was giving me choose me vibes like pick me vibes and I was like please stop please stop I do not like this character I'm so sorry I am so sorry I feel like this is going to be a controversial one because it's a new release and I've seen people that have really enjoyed it but I just couldn't I am actually going to go find my um find something because I highlighted a quote and I just want to read it back to you because this just okay I will find this quote and read it back to you because I just I was hating my life while reading this and one of my goals this year was to start DNF and more stop forcing myself through books that I'm just not vibing with and if I had continued this book I would have ended up in a slump I would have forced read this book put myself in a slump and it would have been awful and it wouldn't have been worth it because I probably wouldn't have rated it highly I do feel bad <laughs> because this is a net galley book so I am going to need to give feedback and link this video where I shit on it which is not a great impression but also I am honest with all my reviews and opinions and I would like that to come through like if net galley don't want me to be honest with my reviews then they can deny me the book and that is totally fine because I am not gonna <laughs> say I liked something when I didn't and I am also not gonna finish reading books that aren't vibing with me let me find this um quote because <laughs> really done my head in right um okay so <laughs> Our main character is sitting reading a book in a bar that only she knows she goes to because 
they play her Halloween music and it's like a secret soiree bar that no one knows about and she usually reads her books in French but she's reading it in English and Gideon the big the brother the friend's brother he found her book open to a page and the page reads there is just no way to hold the egg in one's asshole fully without it breaking a central image of the book and one so taken for granted perhaps hard boiled but then there is not the squeeze and the ooze the slow drip of the yolk the aborted fowl the unborn dinosaur creeping down the leg golden and glowing catching light as it clings to tiny hairs the smooth pores what it, what like is it just me does this make any sense to you like i i get imagery you know i get imagery i get nice prose i get lyrical prose i do not know how you compare a hard boiled egg to a dinosaur or you know i just i don't get it maybe it's just me maybe i'm just too stupid to read this book but I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And I'm so sorry if this ends up being your favourite book of this year. Tell me why in the comments. I would love to know why you enjoyed this if you did. But I would not recommend this. I didn't even finish it. I got to 32%. There was no horror. I hate the main character. The writing was trying to be something that didn't work for me. The pretentiousness of the whole thing was just like, you know, just, I didn't like this. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just didn't like this and that is okay because I can't like everything that I read. So that is it. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so very much for watching. If you want me to read anything or have any recommendations, leave them linked in the comments and yeah, have a great day, great week, great weekend, whenever the hell you're watching this. Remember to stay safe. Remember to stay safe, happy and healthy and I will see you next time. Bye.